Hi, this is Lee. I'm doing a video specifically for Sean today. Sean wants to know how to make a frame that you can cut on your laser cutter um, to fit. Say you have a canvas that you want to make a, um, a miter edged frame for. So this is super easy and I just thought I would do a really quick tutorial on how to do this. Okay, so let me delete that and we'll start at the beginning. I'm going to close all of my windows here. Okay, so let's say we just want to make a rectangular frame. Um, you're going to click on the rectangle tool and just draw a rectangle. It doesn't matter what size at this point. My canvas here is 12 inches by 12 inches. And now I will click on the selection, selection tool and I'm going to change my measurements to inches. Probably most people already have their set to inches, but mine was set to pixels. All right, so let's say our frame, we want our frame to be 10 inches by nine inches. So um, I'm gonna make sure that my ratio here is unlocked so that I can change each side independent of each other. And so I'll change this to 10 inches and I will change this measurement to nine inches. All right, so there is the outside measurements of our frame. Now say you want the, your, your frame to be um, three quarters of an inch thick. Let's actually do it one inch thick just to make it uh, easier. So I'm gonna duplicate this rectangle, Control D to duplicate, and that puts an exact copy right on top of the other one. If I click and drag, you can see that there's a copy. I'm gonna change that to gray and now I'm going to come up here and change the measurements. If I want my frame to be one inch thick on each side, then I need to subtract two inches from each side. So I can just come up here and put in minus two, and then again, making sure that this is unlocked, come over to the next one and put in minus two. Okay, so now I have a rectangle that's two inches shorter on each side than my original. I need to align these so that they're centered. Um, easy way to do that is to open the alignment panel, which is Control shift a The align and distribute panel comes up and I will just want to make sure that both of these are selected. I can either click and drag or I can hold down shift and select both of them. And then I'll click on uh, center vertically, vertically and center horizontally. And now they are both exactly centered with each other. And I just want to cut this square out of this square. So I'm gonna do difference. And with difference, whatever is on top will be subtracted from what is on bottom. So I want my smaller rectangle on top and my larger one on bottom. I hold down shift and select both of those and then do path difference. All right, so there is my frame, which is one inch wide on each side. If I click on the nodes, you can see we have an outside path and an inside path. The next thing I want to do is I want to cut this from this corner to this corner and this corner to this corner, all four corners. I just want to do a mitered cut. To do this uh, very easily, I'm just going to turn my snapping tools on, which are over here on the side. I'm going to close the align and distribute panel. So um, the snapping tools, if they are grayed, uh, if they are dark gray, they're turned on. So I'm just going to come through and turn all of these on. Um, there's individual ones that be like snap to nodes, um, but I just go ahead and turn them all on because it's going to be fine for what I want. And then I'm going to press plus on the keyboard to zoom into these corners. And I'm going to go to the Bezier tool and select it. Now I'm going to come up to this corner and it should snap to it. See how it snaps directly to that corner? And I will click and then snap it to this corner and double click to make a stroke. Now, if your stroke comes out being really thick, it won't really matter because we're just using it to cut. But if you want to change the thickness of that line, you can do Control shift f to open the Fill and Stroke panel. And here I can change the fill of an object, the stroke color, or the stroke style. So if I click on Stroke Style, I can change the thickness of that. There's 10 pixels. There's one pixel. And you can change the measurements here, too. All right, so now I'm going to zoom out and do the same on the other corners. Uh, to zoom out, I'm pressing minus on the keyboard. And then I'm going to zoom in to this corner and do the same thing. Click, double click, 
minus to zoom out, scroll down, plus to zoom in, click and double click, zoom out, zoom in. Okay, I'm going to zoom out so we can see the whole thing. Um, to move the canvas around, I'm pressing the scroll wheel and pulling the mouse, and that moves the whole canvas around. Okay, so now what I want to do is I want to use all of these strokes that I just made to cut that um, frame. I could do it individually um, by clicking each one and then doing path division. But it'll actually be a whole lot easier if I just combine all of these strokes together. So combine is kind of like union, but it retains uh, the strokes. Um, if I union the strokes together, they'll be kind of weird and it kind of changes them. But if I combine them, it just keeps them all as strokes. So I'll click and drag to select those two. And then I'll hold down shift and click and drag to select the rest of them all together. And I'll just go to path combine. All right. Now they are all together. But if I double click, you can see they're still just strokes. There's just one node um, running down the middle of them. So now that those are combined, I'm just going to use those to divide the rectangle behind. So I want to click and drag to select everything. And I will go to Path, Division. All right, now you can see, if I move these away from each other, that they are divided into a miter cut um, frame. Before I send these over to the Glowforge, right now, if I sent it to the Glowforge, it would interpret this as an engrave. And you can change it when you get to Glowforge, but I find it's just easier to go ahead and change it here in Inkscape. So I will select all of them and I'll come down here and change their fill to nothing. And if I hold down shift and click on black, that changes their stroke to black. So just clicking down here changes the fill and holding down shift and clicking changes the color of the stroke. All right, and then uh, one more thing I'll do before I send it over to Glowforge is I will orient these all in the same direction so that the frame is all cut with the same grain of wood. So I'm just going to select this one and rotate it counterclockwise. And I'll click this one and rotate it clockwise. Then because I just like things neat, I'm going to, you don't even have to do this. But I'm going to select them all and open the Align panel, Control-Shift-A, and I will center them vertically, and then I'll distribute them horizontally. And then, just because I'm this way, I like my canvas to be exactly the same size as what I've designed on it. So Control-Shift-R is a keyboard sh shortcut. If I've got everything selected and do Control-Shift-R, it will automatically resize my canvas to exactly the size of my drawing. Okay, so hopefully that um, lets anybody know how easy it is to design a frame for your artwork. Um, and if you have any questions, just let me know. Thanks.